Alex. This is Timmy. You're watching Wound Up TV. Hey, this is Katie Khan for Wound Up TV. I am in a very hot, sweaty Brisbane, Queensland in Australia with the amazing Alex and TV. So guys, we played a show last night. It was quite incredible. You're having a lot of fun up there. So, uh, Thanks. You, yeah, we enjoyed that. Loved it, yeah. <laughs> well, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. Great sound system that makes all the difference. So, uh, most people know you kind of, you guys started back in the Eurofunk kind of underground stuff, and then you're just massive superstars of, uh, of John Bass now, and you're signed to Ram, obviously. So, what's, what do you think's changed? What's been the progression from the beginning to where you guys are now? I think we just, yeah, we just gradually evolved, really. Uh, I, I don't think either of us really actually was like, you know, he hates the expression Neuropunk, but I don't think either of us was like really explicitly a Neuropunk right, right, right. producer or whatever. Maybe sort of more tech, but you know, I think we did a bit more sort of left field or not like we've sort of suddenly decided to make more commercial things. Yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I think, if anything, I just think um, a lot of the bigger labels like Ram Hospital, Digital Soundboy, just want to have a wider sound than what we define as commercial. And also, you know, you reach a certain point where it's like you can't keep doing the same thing because it's going to get old, you know? Like, if, if you don't try and progress as an artist, then, you know, you're not going to get to, to, to where your ambitions are. <laughs> I've always liked sort of really abstract stuff and we try to incorporate a bit of everything on the album but make make sure that there's a there's a red line of a hook or or something that you're going to be able to sink back which is very important for us. Yeah. And the moment you have something to sink back people can identify with it. We we didn't intend to make like a commercial sounding track like elevate this sound. It's time to elevate this sound. It was truly something we felt, and, and it was, it, yeah, it's just a natural progression. Really. Yeah, definitely. And with that track, which by the way is like my favourite, um, it's one of uh, it's one of you singing on it. Is that true? Yeah. You're the vocalist. I am. That's so awesome. Nice. Do you, have you been doing that for a long time? Uh, you... No, that was the first tune I ever sang. Wow. I actually sang about sort of overcoming the inhibitions that stopped me singing That's in awesome. the first place. Yeah. So. Uh, you guys are pretty up there, quite at the top of the food chain in terms of production all that sort of thing, but you must have some idols that you still look up to and, and all of that sort of thing, so who do you... There's, there's loads really, I mean, loads I, I don't really have any idols, I've got people I admire and, yeah. and you know, that I can look at and, and go like, wow, you know, you're doing something truly incredible. Yeah. Um, for the last few years I've been a massive fan of Trev Muller. Um, yeah. Like Danish Trek Muller, which is a house strike. Well, he does anything now these days, but just his innovation and, and, and sort of the impact he had on me was similar to to when I first heard drum and bass, actually, or like Jungle or whatever it was called back in the day. It was just something. It was like a take on music that that you could just hear the labour of love and everything that he did. Um, recently, there's there's a few other people that's kind of popped up on the radar. One of them is Nicholas Jar. Um, who actually, who we were up against for Essential Mix of the Year um, and he won it and, and his mix was amazing and I've been checking his... Yeah, great plug. Good plug. Um, and, and he was, um, he also, I've, I've been checking his stuff and, and his production is amazing. So like, I don't necessarily look at drum and bass, I mean I respect and admire, ooh, little lizard. Uh, sorry. Um, I respect and admire... Crazy things you see in Australia. Yeah. I respect and admire a lot of drum and bass producers but I rarely look at them for inspiration. Um, I try and look outside the genre and I think that's very important mm. to because to me drum and bass that's inspired by drum and bass tends to be a bit bland. What are your three top tracks of kind of the last six months or last year that you can think of at the top of your head? For me at the moment, every time I get excited it's hazard. You know, if it comes to drum yeah, and bass, it's Hazard. Every time Hazard does something, I'm going to be like, yeah, I can't wait to hear that. Because, I don't know, for years, I necessarily, I don't know if I didn't get his music, I've always respected him. 
but like the last sort of like year and a half, man, I just think he's really Killing just it. come into his own. It's so raw and it's so incredibly like just the sound of it sounds expensive and analog, and I think that's part of of what I miss when a, in a lot of this hyper produced inside the box stuff is to have that rawness and warmth that analog gear brings. And you know, Hazard has a mountain of analog gear that he swears by. It. And you can really hear it in his track. And he's brought a sort of darker sort of vibe. Yeah, totally. He's gone to more sort of future music rather than just sort of party tunes. Which yeah. Is a little bit more about the form. Yeah. Yeah. So like within our genre, that's it. I mean, he's you know, yeah, he's, he's, he totally is the man. All right, so uh, this is Katie Khan for Wound Up TV. This is the lovely Calix MTV. <laughs>